And I am back. You know, I saw something, um, I, I guess over the weekend, uh, somewhere on the internet, I don't remember, but it was a piece about how hundreds of so-called ordinary citizens, although if you participate in an attempt to overthrow the government, I wouldn't consider you to be ordinary, but hundreds of ordinary citizens who were involved in the attempt to uh, destroy this country on January 6, 2021, Hundreds of them have gone to uh, trial, they've paid fines, and they've gone to jail. In some cases, prison. But not Trump. Um, lawyers like Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis have pled guilty over their efforts to overturn the election based on lies pushed by Trump. They pled guilty, but not Trump. And last week, Ronna McDaniel... <laughs> was fired. She was Trump's Trump's girl on the Republican National Committee, but she was fired from her new job at NBC because so many journalists at NBC complained about the lies she told to support Trump. But Trump is still on television, even on MSNBC and CNN and ABC and NBC and CBS. I mean, those are the legitimate networks, even though a lot of the stuff they say, I admit, uh, it's not necessarily things that that we feel, I feel, maybe you do too, are promoting the idea of truth and, and, and justice where it concerns this orange son of a bitch. But Trump is still on television. So many people have been forced to deal with the justice system and suffer the consequences if they were found guilty, but not the orange bastard. Uh, Some networks are still offering live coverage of this son of a bitch as he spews out his lies about uh, about Biden or gets it deep into this bullshit about prosecutors are trying to persecute him and hurt him because he's never done anything wrong. (sighs) So, the people in Congress, and boy, what a disappointment they've become. I'm talking about what used to be the Republican Party, the Christian fascists. The people there... The, the the honchos in corporations, um, the loud mouths on so many right-wing talk shows, the, uh, the big shots inside the Republican Party. All of these people look the other way when it comes to Trump. It's if they are pretending that Trump really doesn't exist, that what he, what he says and the poison that is put out there with the complicity of our national media, that all the bullshit he puts out there is just background noise, really doesn't mean anything. Whereas the truth is, it means everything to millions of people in this country. So where are the leaders? Where are the political leaders, the business leaders, the leaders in entertainment, the leaders in sports? I realize there are some voices who are speaking out. But the business, uh, the, the business leaders, the corporate chiefs, where are they? Now, I've said before that capitalism as a system of exploitation loves to coexist in a country with a military dictatorship or in a country where there is no due process or justice under law or, or equal protection under law. But that's a system. Capitalism is a system. And I realize they're individual capitalists, people. But the people in this country who had these massive corporations, the thousands of billionaires that we have in this country now, why are they not speaking out? It was our system of government that allowed them to become billionaires. I I, I mean, you don't become a billionaire in a fascist country unless you are bosom buddies with the fascist chief of state, as in Russia. 
The only billionaires in Russia are the people who are willing to do anything and everything that Putin tells them to do with no protest, with, in fact, complete praise and admiration for the dear leader. But in this country, knowing, as they should, that it was our democratic system that allowed them to become as wealthy as they have within the capitalist framework, which is obviously unfair. It's unfair to all those except the people who control the capital. That's why it's called capitalism. Ta-da! But in this country, why why are the, the corporate heads not standing up on their hind legs and saying, this shit's got to stop? I don't have the answer. Do you? Um. I, I, I guess... The fear is that if they offend the majority of of the Christian fascists who believe this shit, that somehow they, the corporate chieftains, the political leaders, the, uh, uh, oh, whoever the hell they are, that somehow they'll be punished by Trump. Trump is a orange blob of a fucking coward. Now, granted, he has his, his, his SS behind him. He has his brown shirts, or in Italy, the black shirts. He has those people to issue threats and, and, and cause people to fear for their own lives because they have spoken out in defense of democracy and against this orange son of a bitch. But if that is true, if people are not speaking out because of fear, then the idea of establishing a fascist state in the United States is already a fait accompli, right? I mean, it's done. It's done. Now it's just a matter, if, if that's true, then it's just a matter of the mechanics of putting in place a fascist state, which means no longer an independent press, no longer an independent judiciary, as questionable as that's become, uh, no longer a legislative branch of government that acts independently because of the separation of powers in our Constitution, that acts independently from the executive, all of that is gone with the establishment, the putting in place of fascism. Individual freedom, (laughs) First Amendment rights, um, wave goodbye to that. And Trump has promised that, that that's what he's going to do. And his, the filth that speaks for him, like the dumpster dweller, Steve Bannon, or the Nazi Jew, Steve Miller, they have made it clear that one of the first things Trump is going to do, and he must do this, is to invoke the Insurrection Act. Which, if it is called up by Trump, and he alone has the power to do it, I believe, that it means any, every sort of demonstration against his illegal rule, if he somehow winds up in the Oval Office again, any and every demonstration against that rule will be treated as a criminal act. And if you want to know how the authorities will react, look at the videos of what happened to the people who had the temerity to protest the murder of Alexei Navalny in Russia. Look how Putin handled that. Trump loves Putin. Trump wants that power. And if he's elected, Trump is going to do everything in his power to get it. And since we've all had eight, ten years now to observe this filthy pig in action... Trump, we can be pretty much assured that if he goes after that power, if he winds up in the Oval Office, he will get it. He will have it. (sighs) And now the latest, uh, I mentioned this last week, but I didn't get into it very deeply. The latest is if, if you want to go to work for the new Republican National Committee, You have to answer a question. No, not your age, not your height, not your weight, not your 
you know, not your previous job experience. But the question is, do you agree with Trump that the election was stolen? Now, if you answer that, no, I don't agree that with that. Do you think for a moment you'll wind up working for the Republican National Committee? The Republican National Committee is not that. That also has been destroyed by this orange bastard. It's now the Trump National Committee. And it's run by people, including his daughter-in-law and some psycho from North Carolina. They are the ones who now run the Republican National Committee the Christian Fascist National Committee, it might as well be called, or the Trump National Committee, certainly not Republican anymore. And the other thing I read in the piece that I'm quoting from, the U.S. Supreme Court recently twisted its neck to look the other way to allow Trump another escape, amazing escape. The court unanimously rejected efforts by several states to deny Trump a place on the 2024 uh, ballot due to his involvement in insurrection, in trying to overthrow the government of the United States that he now wants to head again. I, I, I mean, the justices in that case, including those who profess to be liberals, apparently ignored the riot and ruled that national elections could not be decided, the candidates of those national elections or the outcome of those national elections couldn't be decided by state officials. But God damn it, isn't that what the Trump monsters tried to do? Wasn't that the whole point of the January 6th destruction of the U.S. Capitol and the deaths of five officers? Wasn't that the point? To try to overturn a national election due to the criminal activity of various state officials. Wasn't that what it was all about? Well, let me answer my own question. Yes. Fuck yes, that was what it was all about. But the Supreme Court, when they heard the petition from the state of Colorado to disqualify Trump from the presidential ballot in that state because of his participation in that attempt to destroy U.S. government, the Supreme Court unanimously ruled, no, we don't think so. No, it's okay. No, Trump can stay on the ballot. What the... F- I, I, I mean... <laughs> Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me... Mike Malloy are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.